I knew I was a Christian again, and I knew that I was gay, and that I could be both. My name is Reverend Troy Perry. I am the founder of the Metropolitan Community Churches, a worldwide spiritual movement. I know some folks say we're a gay church, but we're the Church of Jesus Christ. It's open to everybody, amen. We don't care who you are, you're welcome here. I was born in Tallahassee, Florida, North Florida. I started at nine knowing that I was different. Uh, the church had told me it was a sin. They told me I was going, to, you know, that I would go to hell if I acted out on any of this. And when I was 15 or 16, I'd gone into the public library and I found a book on psychiatry. I had found that word homosexual. Somehow I knew even then this fitted me and it told me that I was sick, sinful, criminal. I wanted to wear my mother's clothes. Um, you know, things that I thought, I just, just slammed the book shut and I said, well, that's not me. I don't want to dress like my mother. I finally went to my pastor in the Pentecostal church when I was 18, living in Mobile, Alabama, and I said to him, I have a problem. And finally, his eyes lit up and he said, oh, I know what you're trying to tell me and all you need to do is marry a good woman and that'll take care of that problem. And I married his daughter. Well, it wasn't funny or flippant five years later and two children and I had to come out to my mother. I said to my mother, I am a homosexual and I'm not gonna live like other than that for the rest of my life, that's the end of it. I once it dawned on me and I said, wait a minute, God, I said, this cannot be you. You can't love me. I'm still a practicing homosexual. That's not gonna change. And with that, all these years later, um, 46 years later, I tell people that um, it was uh, so interesting that um, God spoke to me in that still small voice in the mind's ear, I tell people, and said, Troy, I love you. You're my son. I don't have stepsons and daughters. And then it dawned on me, wait a minute. If God loves me as a gay person, then God has to love other people. And I said, God, I think I found my niche in the ministry again. I said, nobody's evangelizing our community and nobody's trying to talk to us. And if you want to see a church start as a special outreach into the gay and lesbian community, but open to everybody, you just let me know when. And that still small voice, the mind's ear, let me know now. That's all it said. And I immediately started trying to figure out what to do. October the 6th, 1968, uh, I always tell people that 12 people showed up, uh, nine friends and three strangers. Um, it was a view of things to come, I thought, for our church. That first Sunday with those 12 people, everybody looked every time anybody opened the door. They just were sure it was going to be raided. But once we finished, there was really a, what we Christians call a move of the Holy Spirit. And during communion, only three people came up for communion. But there wasn't a dry eye in the place. And when it was over with, the exciting talk. And next week we had 14 attendants. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus, we're growing. Next week we had 18. I said, oh, glory be the Lamb forever, here we are. The week after that we had nine, I almost died right then and there. And I always tell people that I felt the Holy Spirit said to me, quit counting the crowd, just do what I've told you to do. And within a year and a half, uh, we owned our first piece of property here in Los Angeles, and we ran over a thousand in attendance. I'm also the co-founder of the oldest gay pride parade in the world. And uh, that is the Christopher Street West uh, gay pride parade here in LA. In New York City, the advocate had carried a story about what had happened today, what we refer to as the Stonewall Rights in New York. And when I read the story in The Advocate, it excited me for some reason. I mean, the people had stood up for their rights. We had our prey. And here we were, it was wonderful, when all at once we arrived and we had no idea if anybody would show up, and the crowd that showed up. I've never seen more hats and dark glasses in my life line in Hollywood Boulevard. I mean, it was so funny, people were frightened. But having said that, 
um, you know, here we were. And after it was over with, we knew we would have done something important. And um, it was the start of our fight for our rights here in the city in a lot of ways. So I say to young people, it's important that you, you know, you can't do it just now, but to learn the other side of the story. There are wonderful books out there now. Go online. The one thing you have that I didn't growing up was the internet. Whatever young people, when you can go look and start looking, uh, there will be people who have differences. Uh, but remember this, whatever you do, I tell people over and over again, God didn't create you so God could have somebody to sit around and hate. Thank you.